好的，各位现场的来宾，还有线上的朋友们，大家午安，大家好，我是 I。Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ivy. I will be your MC today. Welcome to the second forum of the 2023 Taiwan Design Week, hosted by the Industrial Development Administration (MOEA) and executed by the Taiwan Design Research Institute. This event aims to broaden horizons, remove boundaries, and establish、um, platforms. This Design Week event will take place from December 1st to 10th at the Song. Sun Cultural and Creative Park. This year's theme, Elastic Bridging, focuses on sustainable development and smart innovation. The events include thematic. Exhibitions, exchange forums, and design nights. The thematic exhibitions feature 54 diverse Taiwanese teams and five international teams. The international forum covers a wide range of topics, including sustainable development, smart innovation, AI, human-machine interaction, design policies, and urban design indicators, creating a platform for exchange between Taiwan and the world. The theme of this session, Forum Two. Is design thinking and AI-assisted generation. The main focus is on how to combine design thinking with AI technology to achieve innovation design outcomes. We will explore how to use AI technologies to enhance design efficiency and creativity and expand our understanding of the integration of design and technology. This forum will be chaired by Shi Quan Chen, Creative Center Design Director and Senior Vice President of Compal Electronics. Let us give him a warm welcome. Meanwhile, we have invited other speakers: Zhao Ziyu, Dean of the Faculty of Social Science at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and we would also like to welcome Jack Chang, CTO of AI Foundation Taiwan, and we would also like to welcome Si Han Lin, Director. And currently, a co-founder of Group G, and they will share their experiences, inspiring the audience to think and explore the intersections of design thinking and the use of AI. So now, let's first welcome Lin Xinbao and the Vice President of the Design Research Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the second forum of the. 2023 Taiwan Design Week. Before the forum began, we,、um, the speakers and I, had a brief、uh, discussion、uh, in the guest lounge. We all expressed our、uh, passion for the use of、uh, technology, particularly for the use of AI. AI is a great tool for collecting data. Analyzing data and generating content, we are all at the same time concerned about whether we will be replaced by AI one day. However,、um, most of them approach this issue with a fairly optimistic perspective. Humans are so unique that there are tasks that we perform in which that our roles cannot be replaced. We need to be able to identify what these fields are. Expanding our own capabilities and、uh, honing the design skills. So the Taiwan Design Week、um, is、uh, officially inaugurated this year. It is a exchange platform on which designers and like-minded、uh, professionals will be able to gather and bounce ideas of one another. And to showcase Taiwan's design talent, as we learn from designers and creative talents from around the world, we've gathered here to explore environmental sustainability issues, urban development, as well as AI-powered tools and how that is affecting the design sector and the overall landscape. So the Taiwan Design Week is designed especially to answer and address these issues. It enables us to. Communicate and、uh, exchange our opinions and insights with our counterparts from around the world. And this afternoon,、uh, we have、uh, Chen Shiquan, the CEO and Senior Vice President of the Marketing and Innovation Office of Compo Electronics. He will be chairing the discussion session and moderating the. 
、uh, Q and A as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions. Uh, please hold those questions until the end of today's program, where we will open it up for Q and A. And I look forward to further engaging and discussing with you in today's forum. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome the moderator and the chair of today's panel discussion. The moderator for the second forum at the Taiwan Design Week. Mr. Shi Quan Chen. He's the CDO of Compo Electronics. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, audience members joining us on site and online. Good afternoon. The Vice President of Taiwan Design Research Institute. Talked about、um, uh, the concerns and also the some of our the issues that related to AI, and we are here standing at a crossroad. We have reached a tipping point.、Uh, with the launch of、uh, ChatGPT, we are、uh, witnessing the rise and rapid expansion of the use of AI. For those of you who have not used、um, ChatGPT, can you please raise your hand? There are Uh, no hands in the air, and for example,、uh, Miss Wu Dan Ru, a famous、uh, female author here in Taiwan,、uh, helped to popularize the use of AI、uh, because she talked extensively about how that had helped her with her artistic creation. In 1956, the topic. Of、uh, AI was raised at an international conference. Joe McCarthy talked about artificial intelligence and how that could ultimately affect the industry. And here we are, seventy years down the road, in 2023, we've gathered here today again to discuss this specific topic: AI、uh, powered tools. And how they are being employed by designers, and、uh, philosophers, anthropologists, and as well as、uh, psychologists are all talking about the topic of AI. For example,、uh, ex existentialism、uh, has always explored the value of the human existence. Martin Heidegger, as well as. John Paul Sartre all talked about the value and the meaning of the human existence, and many people are questioning: Are we going to be replaced? Be replaced by AI? Well, what is the actual value of the human existence in the age of AI? Where do we draw the line when it comes to ethics and the eth ethical、uh, application of AI and critiques of AI?、Uh, Came into being in the 70s. For example, the School of Frankfurt、uh, talked extensively about how technologies and、uh, modern techniques can be used to police the modern society, to monitor the mo modern society, and this、uh, reflects on the fact that that、uh, why Elon Musk acquired、uh, Twitter, which now called X,、um, which is to、uh, gain, which is to gain data. Uh, if the if the bank's app says that you have zero in a bank, a zero deposit in your、uh, bank account, and you're you're broke unless you can prove otherwise, Michel Foucault, Jack Derrida, all these authors all, all talked about power and identity and their relationships with technology, and these relationships are being redefined and challenged by AI, the the rights. And our records, whether it's in the banking industry, in politics, or in running an election,、um, we're all using AI. We're all using data、uh, to gain to gain a competitive edge. Within four days,、um, the AI landscape had major events.、Um, 
particularly with the change of leadership with uh, ChatGPT. Within four days, the leadership changed multiple times um, and sending shockwaves through the uh, technological industry. So now we're at the age of uh, the post-human age or the superhuman age. We also need to consider even more issues. Many people ask when and how and what will be replaced by AI. There are two schools of thinking. Is it a utopian state that we will arrive at? We're all just sitting on our hands, AI will do our jobs. Or would it be a dystopia kind of outcome where who humans will form the upper or lower uh, supply chain that connects the AI. We're all part of the supply chain or manufacturing value chain, working alongside with AI, or we supply our energy to AI, becoming uh, the supportive system for AI. So we need to explore these issues and um, how to situate design within the overall context of AI. So ladies and gentlemen, we will now invite our VIPs to please go on stage to take a few group photos. Now, can we please request our VIPs to please go on stage to join us in group photo shooting? I'm sorry for stumbling over words. We have a virtual receptionist uh, at today's venue, so hopefully uh, an MC like me will not be replaced anytime soon. So please direct your attention to the cameras in front of you as we take a few more photos. Okay. Now our photographer is taking a photo of everyone in the audience. Now we will proceed to the very first presentation of the forum. The first presentation will be delivered by Professor Chu, Dean of Social Science and Professor of Psychology at CUHK. He will be giving the presentation on thinking in opposites, creative mindset for innovations. So good afternoon, everybody. I understand how hard it is to stay awake for the first talk after lunch, particularly when talk will be delivered by an academic. So uh, I will try to make the talk less academic. But uh, if you fall asleep in the middle of this presentation before I do, I can understand. Okay. <laughs> now, um, I would like to start by to showing you my digital twin. So this digital twin was made about eight years ago when I started my job at uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. At that time, I predicted that in a few years' time, my digital twin will take my job. Okay, so to, the next thing that I want to show you is to, a talk that I did not deliver in person in April this year. I was invited by the 
uh, Tsinghua University in, main, uh, in the mainland to give a talk on uh, this topic, topic, how bring the current generative AI is and what's the prospect of human OD competences. At that time, I happened to be in Taiwan. So I couldn't deliver the talk myself. So I recruit two co author The first one is a graduate student at Salmon University. Her job is to train a uh, chatbot by the name of Jane, the third author. So that uh, Jane could actually like, deliver the talk in my voice. So I delivered the talk. Actually, I didn't. Jane did. Okay. But uh, this talk sounded like one that uh, was delivered by myself. Okay. Now, okay, let me go back. Now, this really creates the possibility that, well, my university can find me right away. Because the university can just ask Jane to lecture on my behalf. All Jane needs to do is to study everything I know, everything I've written, right? So my prospect of being replaced by the generative AI is quite real, okay? Although I'm still quite optimistic because I'm going to retire in a couple of years anyway. Now, uh, the question is, Will designers also face the same crisis of being replaced by generative AI? Now, this is something I learned from Sina many years ago, uh, the two diamonds in design thinking. And uh, today I'm going to focus on uh, the two components in the first diamond, empathy and also creative ideation. Properly, I will say more about uh, creative ideation. What I want to say is that, yes, we are facing the keen competition from generative AI, but generative AI could also be a good partner in these two processes. Okay, now uh, I elaborate on this later. I would just like briefly mention about empathy. Now, there is a recent article in Nature with this title, AI will never convey the essence of human empathy. Well, uh, this will be a talk for another occasion. The challenge is whether AI can really respond in an emp empathic way to its readers or audience. Well, there is now a lot of study on this topic, including to whether AI have the theory of mind, can take other people's perspective. But let's assume that, well, very soon, AI can be trained to write very empathic message. At the present, the evidence is that human beings are not ready to receive an empathic message from AI. Now, I can show you the evidence, but that will put you to sleep very quickly. So, to just give you one example, this is a, uh, something that happened a few months ago in the US in the roundabout. So you may remember that there is an incident called the Michigan State University shooting. There was a mass shooting at MSU, all right? And then the, the dean at Vanderbilt sent a very empathic, consoling message by email to the students, all right? And then later on, it was discovered that the message was offered by generative AI. So students got very upset that the university should write a uh, consoling message using generative AI. So what ends up is that uh, Vanderbilt have to apologize for chat using ChatGPT in email on Michigan shooting. So that tells you something about human readiness to accept an empathic message from um, generative AI. No, but that would not be the focus of my presentation today. My focus will be on to this particular element in the two-diamond model, creative ideation. Can generative AI be creative 
or as creative as humans. Now, I'm a psychologist. I study creativity. I gave out standard tests of creativity to people. So what I did in this conversation is I gave out standard tests of creativity to uh, check GPT, uh, to like uh, generative AI. So this is Jen. So the question I have for her is, what is a cock? That is also an insect. Now, for this question, Jen performed my undergraduate students. My undergraduate students were not able to readily supply an answer. But Jen could. She said, cicada. OK, this insect would uh, give out a uh, regular rhythm. OK, uh, and uh, could actually work like a cock. OK, so now Jane could provide this answer because she could quickly search through her database and find an example that uh, meets the criteria of a cock and an insect. So I gave uh, Jane another question. What is a fruit that is also a kind of furniture? And Jane said, how about an apple chair, which exists, of course. And uh, my undergraduate students could not readily provide an answer. All right. Now, for these two examples, actually, there is an answer in the data. And uh, Jen is particularly efficient in retrieving the answer from her database. Whereas our students either lack the knowledge or are not as efficient in information search as generative AI. That makes sense? Now, indeed, well, this is from DALI, okay, uh, from uh, OpenAI. You can actually give a palm and ask, uh, well, uh, generative AI to suggest an armchair in the shape of an avocado, an armchair imitating an avocado. If you give this instruction, then, uh, well, generative AI will be, give, will be able to give you like many suggestions for the design of a chair. That can be done. Okay, that can be done. If you give a very clear instruction that I want an armchair in the shape of avocado, okay, but of course you have to give this instruction. You have to know what you are looking for, okay? Now, this is something interesting. I asked this question, what is a stove that is also a bicycle? Oh, Jane got stuck. Okay, and said, I'm not aware of any stove that is also a bicycle. Then she gave me a long lecture, what a bicycle is, and what a stove is, and how it is, why it is impossible to have a stove that is also a bicycle. Now, on this item, my student actually performed better. They could come up with ideas like this one, a bicycle and power stove. All right? Okay. Now, I gave another question to Jen. What is a shoe? That is also a search. Now, Jen got stuck again and said, sorry, there's no long shoe. That is also a shirt. But there is indeed a t-shirt that is also a pair of shoes. And my students were able to come up with a design that meets the criteria. Okay, but uh, Jen had difficulty in doing that. Now, I am going to tell you why the Jen would got uh, into this kind of jam in uh, responding to these questions. The next question I am, have for Jen is, who is someone who is both alive and dead? Jen got stuck again and said, there is no one who is both alive and dead simultaneously. And of course, in the creative industry, there are many such creatures that we have already created that are both alive and dead. But what uh, I would like to tell you or highlight is that uh, this is direct quote from Jen. In reality, a person can only be either alive or dead. Or dead. Alive or dead. Okay, which brings me to the main point I want to talk about today. 
Now, I don't know how many of you are Star Trek fan. I am. Okay. So this is Star Trek Next Generation, and you may remember there is a character, Lieutenant Data, who is an android. Android, right? It's like a a a, a, a very advanced uh, robot. And uh, one of the shortcomings, and also a strength of him, is that he reasons totally logically, because his reasoning is is bound by logic. Okay, so to, uh, these are some of the codes. I'm functioning within normal parameters. That is how he functions. Why would I lie to you? That would be illogical. Okay, that is what he would say. So logic is something that constrains how data would respond, and there are like two laws in uh, in, no uh, in uh, logic that I would hi I would uh, focus on today: the law of identity and the law of contradiction. Data is bound by to these two laws. What do they say? It's very simple. If you have two over long overlapping concepts or two constructive concepts, they cannot be one identity. That's why Jen would say, no one can be both life, alive and dead. They are either alive or dead, because being alive and being dead are two constructive con concepts, all right? Now, another character that I like a lot in Star Trek is Captain Picard, he's human. And uh, one of his weaknesses, and also a blessing, is that uh, he does not always think logically. He could think super logically. Now, this brings me to like, uh, a very important uh, ability that uh, so far, generative AI have not mastered or would not perform very spontaneously. That is thinking in opposite. So instead of like uh, thinking like being alive or dead, okay, humans can think of something that is both alive and dead. All right, okay, and it is this ability to manipulate contrastive constructs that uh, give rise to a lot of creative ideas. I give you some example. Show me a face that is both happy and gloomy. Jane would get stuck. And psychologists can come up with pictures like this. When you rotate a figure by 180 degrees, you turn a happy face into a gloomy one. How about uh, this famous picture? Okay, it is happy, smiling some of the time, but not all the time, okay? How about someone who is both a lover and an enemy. Shakespeare would say, Romeo and Juliet. All right? What, where is both inside and outside to an architect? One possible answer is you have a structure that has the inside out and the outside in. Now, this is the creative ability of humans. We are able to think in opposite. We are able to manipulate seemingly opposite concepts to come up with new percepts or new concepts. What is both Asian and Western? In Taiwan, you will see a lot. And uh, that is an important part of a creative and cultural industry. Food. Delicious French Japanese cuisine. Served in a nice restaurant in Hong Kong. If you come to Hong Kong, let me know. I'll take you there. All right? Ice cream and moon cake. Okay, you put them together. You have the moon cake ice cream for the mid autumn festival. And how about painting? This is the painting from a contemporary Chinese artist. So this. Van Gogh style, okay, but the subject is again related to a legend in the mid-autumn festival in the Chinese culture. This is the opposite by the same painter. 
the painting style is Chinese painting style. The subject is Angry Bird. All right, okay. Now, this is a picture that uh, was on exhibition in Hong Kong, I think uh, one year ago, in the Hong Kong uh, Convention Exhibition Center. I want to get it, but I was too late. But what you see here is just like uh, a painting that collects symbols from different cultures and from different industries. So you have Disney there, you have Pokemon there, you have Japanese culture, you have Chinese culture there, you have Adidas, okay? Now in technology, remember the first iPhone, how Steve Jobs promoted this product? It is three products in one. It's an interesting transformation. It's both a smartphone, an iPod for listening to music, and a handheld computer, all in one, okay? And uh, this is a confession by uh, Steve Jobs. He, was, he said he was not uh, that creative. What he managed to do is just, just like joining the dogs, okay? Putting to seemingly unrelated things together and then to come up with a creative product. Ah, this is something you, someone you will listen to tomorrow, okay? And this is exactly what he said. Design, extraordinary design outcomes. Well, it's the result of creating intricate elegance through careful just the position of opposing elements. The same concept. So design versus technology, stillness versus motion, radical atoms versus tangible bits, okay? Those are seemingly opposite concepts, but he put them together and manipulate them and uh, that creates some extraordinary outcomes um, that uh, distinguish our design from uh, possibly a design generated by generative AI. Of course, another pair of opposites that we are constantly dealing with is automation versus human control. Okay, and so for designers, okay, if you get the message, a way out is to find a way to harmonize these two, right? Automation, generative AI versus human to control. Now, this is a recent paper. It came out just like uh, a month ago in Nature. You talk about uh, the prospect of having machine culture. And I think that relates to the crisis a few days ago in OpenAI. Is it possible that one day machines will learn from other machines and create their own culture? Okay. Well, in this paper, the authors are very optimistic that machine culture will emerge because of all these characteristics, which I will not go into details, but these are things that it can do. I would just like to use this illustration. This illustration is possibly one reason why we got panic because of the advance of generative AI, the game Go. Okay? Now, after AlphaGo and AI, to, um, uh, an AI platform was introduced, well, even the best Go player, human player, was defeated. And the reason why he was defeated was because AlphaGo could actually come up with moves that human players did not know. And the reason why AlphaGo can do this is because AlphaGo is a, a, term, a platform that allows AI agents to pay Go with one another. And they can pay tens of millions of games within a few days. And then uh, by paying against one another, okay, AlphaGo can actually come up with very innovative move. So that is very scary. So if machines can learn from other machines, then uh, they may actually be able to come up with knowledge that would uh, overpower human intelligence. Okay, that's scary. But that is 
the scary part of the story. The more reassuring part of the story is when you ask a uh, agent, a, a, an AI agent that is very familiar with the game Go, to evaluate the games being paid by human Go players over the years, to evaluate how good they are. You find out that starting from 1915 to all the way to the middle of uh, year 2010, uh, uh, year 2000, uh, 2015, the level of performance human Go players have not uh, been uh, not improved much. But then after the introduction of AlphaGo, human Go players performance improved. Why is that the case? Because human Go players are learning from AlphaGo and their performance improved. That means humans and machine could actually co-evolve. Okay, we are becoming better Go players. That's what the evidence tells us. Now, this is another very recent article in the, published in Nature, Creativity in the Age of Generative AI. So what it argues is that, uh, well, generative AI is something that we would, cannot avoid. It's going to come. It will be part of our work ecology. We cannot avoid it. What we could do, or the best thing we can do, is to be aware of what are the things we still tend to do better. Okay? And then to create a co-creativity, co-development platform so that both machine and humans can improve their performance and make distinctive contributions. Going back to Star Trek, you can have data, and you can have Captain Picard only. But my belief is that it takes the partnership of Captain Picard and data to take enterprise to somewhere no humans have gone before. Okay, that is the kind of creative partnership, co-creative partnership that we are thinking of. It is possible that uh, machine culture will evolve. In fact, it is likely that machine culture will evolve. So this is a uh, quote from my famous sociologist, okay, my uh, hero in sociology. He said, when you have human cultures and other cultures, say for example, the best thing that could happen is we develop the beauty of your culture, appreciate the beauty of other cultures, bring the beauties of different cultures together, and build a world of harmony. Now, this morning, I talked to Jane again, my ChatGPT assistant, and asked her this question. Who can bring the beauty of different cultures together and build a world of harmony? This is the answer she gave. A list of key players that can contribute to this goal, individuals, educational institutions, NGOs, artists, performers, intercultural diplomatic organization, media and communication platform, government initiative. I would say, Jen missed one very important item, and that would be desires. That would be desires. And so, to, that's what I want to share with you. I hope I did not uh, convey unrealistic optimism but at the same time, I also want to like to bring a more positive message to you. That is, we are not going to do away without AI, but we can make it a helpful partner if we know where we stand and what are our distinctive competence at least at this moment. Okay, I don't know what will happen a few years later. Okay, but at least at this moment, we would need to know what we are good at and, form, and foster, forge this kind of like co-partnership. And at this juncture, I would like to thank the Taiwan Design Research Institute for creating all these wonderful platforms so that uh, those partnerships 
can be formed more efficiently. I also like to thank WDO for promoting the uh, design as a uh, uh, very important key payer in bridging technology and human culture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Zhao. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. Let me introduce myself briefly. I am a trained engineer. Uh, I majored in mechanical engineering. Uh, I've been. I am also a programmer. I, I did a lot of coding after I graduated. I also focused on consumer electronics design, and we. Um, worked extensively with the Taiwan Design Research Institute in terms of uh, layout, in terms of uh, uh, human machine interfaces. I have designed a lot. I also focused on uh, design streamlining and other areas. I am currently um, the CTO of Taiwan Artificial Intelligence Foundation. This is outline of my talk today. Um, I will talk about what's AI and ChatGPT and some case studies. What exactly is AI? I I know that um, there's a lot of young people in the audience today. I don't know if you recognize uh, this. These are cartoon characters. Some of you are nodding. Um, so it's a meme that's going around the internet. So ChatGPT seems to be. Your good、uh, buddy, but now after you reveal it, and it is、um, it is nothing as you expected, just like the paperclip here, that would never go away. With the rise AI, many people have different notions or understandings of what AI is. A lot of people equate an AI with Chat GPT. So let's to answer that question. Let's first quickly look at the developmental history of AI. AI first came into being in the fifties, and it went through the first, second waves of、uh, transformation. Now we're at its third wave of transformation. Back in the fifties, um. AI was reliant upon the principles and input of、uh, programmers and designers. There are so many rules, so it was literally impossible to write down all the principles and rules. So back at the time, a lot of supercomputers、uh, were being tested、uh, to run AI, but、uh, they were not quite successful. However, today we're at. We're witnessing the third wave of AI evolution, which is machine learning. I'm not sure if you experienced the first or second wave, but uh, um, maybe you don't have such impression. For instance, we talked about smart appliances,、uh, or maybe a smart、uh, aircon, or、uh, fuzzy logic.、Uh, these are、uh, the、uh, First wave symbols and logic, or second wave、uh, the expert、uh, systems, because、uh, there are、uh, simple algorithm inside this machine、uh, that can adapt、uh, to the environment or the usage、uh, by human. So AI、uh, could have different names or、uh, give you、uh, different things in different time periods. So、uh, now we are talking about、uh, the third wave. And、um, previously it was、uh, machine learning, and now it's ChatGPT.、Um, and let's、uh, look at this. AI is more than、uh, ChatGPT. It's actually、uh, from this 
uh, then try and synapse、uh, a new round of、uh, human human brain. So uh, we uh, use al algorithm to mimic the new round、uh, of a human brain, and these all of these、uh, came together, and then you have this artificial neural network. And this uh, artificial uh, neural network、um, is different. It, it's like、uh, it's more like human, because uh, uh, when you are born, you need to、uh, go to school, you need to study before you can work, right? So、um, similarly, this、uh, neural network needs to be trained. That's how it learns. And you can teach、uh, this neural network anything. For instance, we ask it、uh, to sort out、uh, what is cat, what is dog, and we give them a lot of pictures so that、uh, they can、um, learn、uh, from the process. And after that,、uh, after the training, we uh, can uh, evaluate uh, the success rate, and then、uh, we can use it. Now、uh, we know that this、uh, neural network is capable of、uh, telling、uh, a dog from a cat. So、um, this is uh, different uh, from the AI in the past era, and because of the learning process, it、uh, the learning process is essential, and that's why、uh, the materials are very important. So in Taiwan, you know, we also argue about the curriculum guide、uh, for the、um, school、uh, children. So,、uh, what do we want to teach our children? That will influence what they become in the future. Similarly,、uh, what do we teach、uh, AI? What we train AI with will determine、um, its future. And It's a、uh, the same question, so、uh, you can think of this、um, reversely.、Uh, you, you, what kind of student would you like to have? Then、uh, you think about what kind of materials you need to teach him or her. So,、uh, what kind of AI do we want? And then,、uh, what are the materials we want to give to AI to learn? So.、Uh, This is、uh, the current AI, AI of our times, because AI is、uh, constantly evolving, and、um, this foundation,、uh, AI foundation,、uh, is uh, always uh, doing research on AI, and every, we can see that uh, AI um, evolves into into a different form、um, every week or every month.、Um, And that's why I use the word、uh, the current AI of our times,、um, because、uh, things could be different next month. So、uh, the current AI, well,、uh, is based on、uh, the data we have observed and uh, the uh, model like this, the model、uh, that we have、uh, configured. And this model can be designed by the、uh, programmer. And、uh, Ultimately, they become the code, and it's a software. It's a code, and that's the idea. And there are various ways of learning, like supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, or reinforced learning.、Um, the uh, most commonly uh, seen uh, model is supervised learning, uh, like. Uh, uh, Sorting, testing in the automatic, automated factory or in the hospital,、uh, sorting the images, and then、uh, reinforcement、uh, learning is the model that、uh, previous speaker talked about uh, about uh, AlphaGo and uh, uh, train uh, training or teaching、uh, the Go players. Uh, I like this,、uh, the Polanyi's、uh, paradox, because、uh, what we know is actually much more than what we are able to communicate.、Um, 
we need uh, uh, that's why AI needs to learn from data um, and uh, the definition of uh, AI is uh, something that can express a uh, human intelligence something that can uh, solve problems um, um, they, something that can uh, assist the human labor and uh, something that has the predict uh, predictability ability to predict okay so uh, let's come back uh, to this uh, I talked about how uh, AI came about and it depends on what we want right our needs and we might have need number one two three so uh, and then uh, we need the data uh, what are the data we have? Uh, what kind of uh, uh, textbook do we want to give to our students? And if we are in a enterprise scenario, uh, the boss would usually say that uh, AI is so powerful. Why don't you make it uh, uh, to work for me and make money for me? And so that's not a very clear need. But then how do we uh, make it uh, clearer or more specific for instance uh, make money do you want to reduce costs or do you want to create a new revenue stream so that that's how we define the request and then uh, in terms of uh, data um, what are the data we own uh, in-house and how are these data uh, correlated with the request for instance, I want to uh, create a new revenue stream. So that means I need to um, re get uh, new customers. Uh, what are the channels that I can engage such customers, uh, online or offline? If I only have offline uh, channels, then do I have data of these customers? Uh, some companies might tell us that uh, their customer data are inside the uh, phone of uh, their salespeople. And the salespeople uh, simply uh, record uh, things like uh, this customer uh, book an order, uh, place an order for a car uh, at uh, this time. And maybe a uh, next uh, salesperson uh, just write down a summary like this looks like a uh, client with a good prospects or, or do, so they write such data in different uh, ways and if you want to get the data from these uh, salespeople are they willing to give you such data these are questions question marks and then uh, we need to um, cross check the uh, need and the data the request and the data and uh, in a uh, less than optimal situation, um, I don't have the data that I can use, so I need to collect the new data. So that's uh, when AI uh, cannot work. Uh, and then uh, design thinking. Well, design thinking can be a big help here. Uh, as I said, uh, the request, on the request side, things are not very clear. And when we develop something um, with AI, you know, uh, maybe you don't use ChatGPT. ChatGPT looks uh, relatively simple, but if you want to have an AI project, for instance, uh, to identify the uh, car plate, then design thinking uh, could be a uh, very good tool that can help you frame the question. Um, how, how do I put this? Well, uh, when I uh, was a designer, uh, you know, usually um, the, the, what the customer said are, are not necessarily the questions they have in their mind or uh, the behavior or of our customers uh, do not necessarily tell us what they want. So design, one of the design, designer's uh, job is to identify their uh, needs. And then uh, we can uh, look at the available data and see how the two can relate to each other. 
Therefore, uh, when we talk about AI, well, uh, we usually think that we need uh, an engineer. We need uh, engineers with uh, STEM or IT capabilities. However, after a while, you'll find out that um, we need to convert a uh, real uh, world uh, problem uh, to a uh, solution, that, uh, to a uh, problem that can be solved by AI model. And this is difficult because uh, now we can, uh, we use a lot of software and uh, you can uh, find a lot of um, uh, open source code. Uh, but uh, how you you uh, you can uh, take reference from various places, but then how do you uh, turn a real world uh, situation into a uh, question that can be solved by AI uh, that you don't have anything that you can refer to? So we need to um, think about uh, psychology, uh, sociology, and uh, the law, and and we need the design thinking, and we need to begin uh, with the user as a center. Uh, MIT, uh, an MIT lab professor once said that uh, you, you need to have a, a deep capability in social analysis, otherwise uh, your information application uh, capabilities do not work. Okay, next, uh, chat GPT. Well, um, let me talk about uh, the rationale of uh, ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT is actually doing this uh, wor word uh, succession game uh, like this. I give an input like a robot must, and then there's no ending, right? So I ask ChatGPT to finish the sentence. And so if you uh, input this into the model, the ChatGPT model, then uh, they give you uh, the uh, probability of uh, the next word. And there could be a wide range of choices. And the ChatGPT will give you uh, the word with the highest probability. And uh, we would usually also give ChatGPT um, some uh, kind of um, uh, guidance, right? So uh, respect has the highest uh, probability. Uh, but then uh, the, if you go to ChatGPT, there's a feature uh, named the uh, uh, temperature. So when we uh, train ChatGPT, we tell them that examinate is not uh, correct. You obey is uh, the uh, correct answer. So then you go back to ChatGPT3 and you uh, rebalance uh, these uh, words. And that's how we train uh, ChatGPT so that it will give us the correct answer next time. So this shows you why ChatGPT can be trained. Because it could then access what's available on the internet, whether it's magazine, previous published papers, um, articles, or even something, or a love letter written, written by someone that's put on the internet, whatever it could access, it could use it as the training materials. So a robot must, how do you end the sentence? What is the most likely outcome? So it shows, here it shows what words are most likely to follow the word must. So you could see that based on what I have shown, um, it is a accumulation of a collective human thinking. It is deriving or arriving at the uh, at the logical prediction uh, based on what it could access on the internet. So training is just it's only the first step. Here we see that. See here, for example, the question is, what's the tallest mountain in the world? It's Mount Everest. It is very straightforward because the information is already out there. There's knowledge about the world that it's out there. And the first part of the sentence is already given. The highest mountain in the world is, and the GPT would just come out with the answer. So this is, a, this is a, something that you can very easily train, easily train. And supervised learning is that whenever you give it a, a question, it would then come up with a 
come up with an answer. For example, what is the tallest mountain here in Taiwan? Mount Jade. Period. Right. So, but nobody talks like that. If anybody asks you what's the tallest mountain in Taiwan, you would give a little bit more information. You wouldn't just stop by saying that Mount Jade. So this is less human-like. So the training, the actual training, actually happens here. So the ChatGPT does not just answer. It's Mount Jade. Oh, Mount Jade is famous because of such and such. Every year, it attracts many hikers from around the world because of such and such reasons. It would actually supplement this short answer with even more information, and this is what you get today.、Uh, the new generation of GPT. It's like you are really chatting、uh, with a real person, not just a. Uh, not just a database that provides you with a very definite answer, and it just stops there. So, what GPT is actually doing is not just finishing the same quint sentence for you,、uh, meaning it does not just generate word sequence prediction, not just a language model. It it has randomness. It's um, it is normal if you've noticed that it's normal to give different answers each time to the same question, and ChatGPT reads the previous conversation. In context,、uh, but there's a limit. Of course, you all know that there's a character limit for each input or output response. JGPT's responses are not just、uh, internet search results, and sometimes you ask. The ChatGPT to pro to provide a link or URLs in the earlier generation of GPT, you might have noticed that it would actually give you fictional websites. But、uh, this bug has been removed now; it no longer does that. And when GPT is not connected to the internet, the its answer might not always be correct. For example, when it asks. When it is asked to perform word sequence prediction,、uh, there's no guarantee that it would always give you the correct answer. For example, the, if you ask a question that's a very divisive or ambiguous question, that people have very different or polarized opinions or answers to that question. So, what does GPT do at that point? That this is something that a lot of people are talking about today. Now, I would like to show you a demo. Um, uh, this is a game that I placed with Bin, a realistic text-based RPG game, and I said,、uh, "I want, I, I am going to the Tyroko、uh, National Park. I am the visitor, and you are the guide. You need to show me what the it- ideal itinerary is. Please go ahead to to provide me with the itinerary in text." So here it goes. The game begins. You are a visitor to the Tarago National Park. You just、uh, disembark, disembarked the bus. Now you are standing at the gate to the park. They have、uh, four options. Number one, you could take this route, or the second, third, or fourth route. With so I then I said, okay, I want to pick route number three. So then it tells me what it entails. What number three route? Takes me to visit, for example, Changchun Shrine, which is an important、uh, tourist attraction within the park. It actually gives me very detailed description of all the attractions or stops、uh, that I'll be making if I choose the specific route. It also、uh, comes up with、uh, the next step. Okay, he said. The ChatGPT said, "Oh, you're at the end of、uh, this tour now. What is the next step?" Then it provides me another、uh, four options. What is really interesting, if you look into the details, you will see that、uh, this bus route that it asks me to take, it doesn't. The bus doesn't even stop at the park. And then here it says that the. the He says that oh, listen to the broadcast on board to know when to get off the bus. But in fact, there is no broadcast on Taiwanese buses. And it also suggests that when after you get to the park, you can rent a bike to bike around the park. But in fact, there are no bike rental places within the park at all. And so when I question it,、um, it doesn't give me any concrete、uh, answers. And it also says that you do want to go for a hike at the Drelu Trail. But in fact, visitors need to apply for a hiking permit in order to hike on this trail, and you need to do that one day in advance. So, 
Imagine if you do this in English and you are a foreign visitor to Taiwan and you ask the Bing, the GPT, the chatbot to plan your trip for you. You will realize that you wouldn't even you wouldn't even be able to go far because you wouldn't even be able to get to the park because it's it in fact suggested a bus that does not stop at the park at all. So what's interesting is that it's it's very it it tells you and provides you with the information in such a convincing way that you believe it to be true. Now, and I'm not saying that it is uh, it is of no value. We you just need to verify the information. So no North Face advertisement in China is another interesting example. It says that now you can now the pandemic's over. Now it's it's time to explore the nature. So the ChatGPT. Um, in fact, generated uh, their advertise for, advertisement for uh, the North Face. It says one, here the tagline is 10,000 reasons to go back to the nature. And it af actually is putting out 10,000 reasons out there. So can you imagine uh, being the copywriter for this campaign? You would need to come up with 10,000 reasons. But the copywriter used ChatGPT uh, to come up with these one. Uh, Ten thousand reasons to uh, as part of his uh, advertising campaign, and the copywriter's job was just to verify the different reasons. Now, a little bit on AI-generated um, graphics. We have a lot of um, graphic designers and industrial designers joining us today. Many people use uh, Midjourney to create. Um, images that you want to achieve. A flying brown cat wearing Batman suit was the prompt, uh, or a, pi a cat pilot flying an airplane, photorealistic. So who's who's imagining here? It is the AI, not me. I'm giving prompts. Here, I want the AI to generate a graphics for uh, for a, a cosmetic product. So what I could do is I could uh, give it a different references. I specifically said that it is a cosmetic luminous um, face serum in the style of realistic and hyper detailed renderings. Um, so what about, so here what I'm doing is that I want to create an advertisement um, for this cosmetic product. So I, provided it with other reference materials, our reference graphics, for example, the apple juice. Uh, so I was able to come up with uh, images uh, for uh, Taiwan beer and also for the cosmetic brand. As you can see, this is another example. This uh, girl is generated, um, this image of this girl was generated by AI for for the for the image, uh, I was able to generate over a hundred different images in one afternoon, so uh, it was a very enjoyable experience. Of course, I had to, I had certain requirements. For example, I wanted it to be um, uh, approachable and accessible. Uh, sort of uh, facial expression. I gave very specific prompts. So even with the aid of AI, you would need to know exactly know what you're going after. You would need to be able to turn what you have in mind into uh, into textual formats. I wonder if you have used a stable diffusion control net. It is more difficult to use, more complicated than mid journey, but uh, it is more capable. For example, now I have a sketch of a fish. I could turn it into a Pokemon. And I could also turn it into uh, turn it into a young an image of a young boy, as long as I give it the right prompts and instructions. In fact, uh, PX Mart, the largest um, supermarket chain here in Taiwan, was able to create this meme, uh, turning a pile of dirty laundry into a couple in love uh, out on a date. Kira, I want to ask you. You're all familiar with uh, this image of Napoleon crossing the Alps. Uh, so why is the horse so jumpy? Because there are there are rocks in front of the uh, horses. The horse will have to jump over it. Um, and 
the Napoleon's super secret is that it's it's actually secretly aided by the aliens. So you can create images like that to enrich your storytelling. In fact, another trend in China is AI-generated models to offer a cost-effective way、uh, to display the clothes that they wish to market online. They are ready to showcase new products at any moment. The diversity of AI generation methods brings a plethora of possibilities. There are finer details and different effects. You can see that, that these are all AI generated images. So I don't even know. For example, I want to market this、uh, skirt. I don't even have a top at hand to put on a real model. So here, the AI generates not just.、Uh, A model that wears the specific skirt I want to sell. It also matches that skirt with a white top, with a tank top. So all you need to do is not a model that you hire. You all, you, all you need to, all you need is、uh, knowing what to do with the tools you have at hand. And here is another case study I would like to briefly talk about. JGPT not, not only. Now we're not only talking about generating graphics; we're talking about even planning. Here, you, I give it the following instruction: You are a professional marketing event planner. In order to promote environmentally sustainable living in Taipei, please plan activities to encourage bicycle commuting, including how the activities are conducted, the resources required, and the budget. Here it says that you're going to need an APP, which is two hundred thousand. Air prom- advertisement fifty thousand, overhead a hundred thousand, venue leasing and equipment thirty thousand, purchasing purchasing、uh, awards one hundred fifty thousand. I so it's able to come up with the budget and overall plan for me, even includes、uh, a poster,、uh, and after I gave it very specific、uh, instructions on the design elements, a bicycle silhouette in the background of Taipei one hundred one. Building using a famous landmark in Taipei, so it's a uh, continuously uh, refining process. We would generate one. I would then tell the AI how to fine tune it. So I actually said, well, building app is actually quite expensive. Can we use an existing app? And upon requesting that, the app, in,、uh, the、um, AI suggested that that we、uh, go ahead and use Velodash. And it turns out the Velodash is actually an existing、uh, app that shows you all the different biking lanes around Taipei. So、uh, I was able. So as you can see, that we're able to import the Excel file of、uh, how many people are. Account are are using the, this app, Velodash, and then we can export that and import it into the Chat AI in order to、uh, in order to tally the number of people who are joining the activity, how many people completed, how many bike path journeys, and things like that. I all actually asked the GPT,、uh, the Chat, to、uh, come up with、uh, virtual medals. Uh, these medals are to be delivered virtually to those who complete the tasks of the month. So,、um, lastly, I want to talk very briefly about our own journey. We、uh, began as an AI academy. Now we have moved on. We are we offer、uh, counseling and guidance services to corporations interested in using AI to empower. And upgrade their businesses.、So、if you have any questions, I'm more than welcome to take them and interact with you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to move on to the third presentation today: AI GC workflows and practices delivered by Group G Director Hans Lane. Hello. Hey, 大家好 Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a director with a、uh, Group G. 
Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to speak here at the Taiwan Design Week. Well, uh, my talk will be uh, more relaxed uh, because I don't uh, code. Uh, I will talk more. Uh, I'm, what I talk about will be more related to you guys, I hope. Uh, and. Um, and because uh, our previous uh, speakers have have touched upon the technology and the uh, chat GPT, so I'm not going to um, elaborate on those. I will talk about the uh, real case uh, that I work on. Uh, for instance, uh, how we use AI uh, to um, help us uh, with one project. And um, I will also design projects. You know, it's easy for uh, AI to uh, generate an image for you. But then, uh, what is more important is that you do, but then we will not be replaced by AI. And I will also talk about uh, generating images. Uh, many of you use the mid journey, uh, already use the mid journey. So uh, I will uh, share with you how we use AI because uh, you can use AI to write uh, or to generate images, but uh, th that doesn't mean anyone can be a designer. I will also share with you this technology LCM. Uh, I think this is a more important uh, technology for the next generation designers. Okay, it's here. This is my slide. Uh, okay, great. Uh, I uh, was an animator. Okay, I was an animator, uh, and I don't know how to write code. But then, uh, because of animation, I made uh, some presentations. I uh, was the own, uh, the first animator to be invited to talk at an Apple store in Taiwan, and this is uh, IF award. I uh, received an award uh, in. 2015, uh, and uh, we also have our annual uh, meeting. Uh, this is also in this uh, Song Songshan uh, Creative Park. Uh, this is a talk in the same venue. Uh, at that time, I uh, created uh, 12 horoscope images online. And I shared with the audience how I created those. Uh, AI was not very precise. So I actually created uh, many, many images before I published those 12 online. But uh, AI uh, is different today. AI has uh, progressed at ex an exponential rate. And uh, AIGC, well, uh, how uh, do we use? We, we use AI to generate pictures and uh, text. Uh, like uh, copy, uh, but uh, for uh, designers, it's more important to analyze the issue and uh, use your creativity to analyze the issue and uh, finally uh, receive a solution. What is AIGC? It's AI-generated content. Uh, if when we talk about artificial intelligence, well, um, AI uh, it's not new, but uh, uh, it be became a very hot topic recently because of AIGC, uh, because AI uh, can uh, do many automated work uh, like uh, and with its algorithm. And uh, nobody believed that the AI uh, could uh, uh, write uh, passages or um, create images. But the uh, AI with mid-journey, with chat GPT, uh, it, it is now capable of uh, writing and creating pictures. And people uh, were uh, shocked. But uh, we, uh, upon a further review, you will understand that AI can do something. AI can do some things, but uh, there are also things that AI cannot do. And we don't need to panic. Uh, let me share with you this uh, AI OX IOX. Uh, IOX is a Hong Kong customer uh, of mine. Uh, they asked me to uh, uh, design their corporate logo for them. 
and uh, this is a financial uh, manage wealth management company. So I uh, their logo uh, looks like this. Um, it's uh, a pyramid uh, like wealth, and uh, there's a, this Chinese character of human inside because it's human centered. And they, of course, they want to uh, like uh, uh, grow uh, your uh, the value of your investment. So uh, we uh, communicated with them the logo and, um, and the slogan. Uh, that's fine. But then they the the this company, the executive of, the, of this company, say that they like the uh, five elements in the Chinese culture: uh, the uh, gold, uh, wood, fire. Uh, and water and the earth, and and they uh, in terms of visual colors, they want a white, a gold, and the red, but they don't uh, want the black. Uh, they don't want anything black uh, in their logo. So uh, let's talk about uh, the five elements uh, in the Chinese culture. Right, uh, it's uh, difficult to, to picture those. Uh, right, so and uh, not nobody has done this before. And then uh, talking about the visual impression, uh, the various colors. Well, uh, if you uh, look look for uh, pyramids, uh, and then uh, you you see only uh, gold and uh, black colors. So uh, I uh, presented to my customers and talked about uh, these. Uh, these uh, these are what we have gathered, and then. Uh, we propose uh, to the uh, client that uh, we can use AI uh, to do some ideation. And then um, as a beginning point, and of course, uh, we will add a human touch uh, afterwards. So uh, the client agreed. And then uh, we produce this 30-minute uh, video. So let me show you this video first, and then I will talk about how we created this. Thank you, thank you for uh, clapping for this. Well, um, that's uh, the result of uh, our hard work. Okay, so uh, let's uh, uh, go back to the request of our customer. So define their request and then ideation, right? So uh, pyramid, and uh, there could be different types or shapes, uh, different images of a pyramid. Uh, these are all pyramids of uh, white and gold, but it could come in uh, different images. And they also want to talk about sustainability. So these are uh, white uh, pyramid with plants, but there could be like 100 variations of these. Of these. So um, if you uh, work on this from ground zero, so uh, it's going to take like a few hours for just one image. And it, it will take you a few weeks to uh, do like 12 or 20 uh, images. But then we use AI, so uh, it's uh, much quicker. And then uh, we have these uh, pictures, uh, many uh, choices for our customers. And these are uh, colorful uh, pictures, easier to understand. Uh, so uh, the designers uh, do not need to stay overnight. Uh, so that's good for our health, right? And then um, this one uh, was chosen, but then uh, that's not the end of the project. Uh, we need to uh, fine tune this image. Uh, when we would we do not use these AI uh, pictures, uh, just with without uh, making any modifications. Uh, for instance, uh, we need to clean up the image, and then we need to uh, brighten the sky. And uh, this uh, gold color is not the color we want, so we need to modify the color. So therefore, um, even if it's an image generated by AI, we don't use it directly. We need to modify the image. And here the, is the storyboard. And uh, if you have uh, made any video, you will understand this. We need the storyboard first. And uh, scene one is a uh, 
uh, wood gives uh, birth to fire, and the fire gives uh, birth uh, to gold. Uh, and then、uh, we have sand, gold sand accumulation into a pyramid, and water,、uh, gold gives birth to water, and uh, this uh, fluid, uh, gold fluid means uh, cash uh, flowing in, and now it becomes a big tree. And because、uh, we want、uh, fruitful results, right? So、uh, on your investment, so that's why.、Uh, The、uh, tree grows bigger, and it gives、um, a lot of、uh, good fruit. So it's a a big tree, and then、um, in the end, we have、uh, many many trees、uh, to form a forest. So that's the return on investment, and then、uh, they are、uh, enclosed by the pyramid. So it's like、uh, everything is inside a box. And、uh, this is the logo of this company.、Um, and you might ask me why the two uh, sequence. Uh, well, because、uh, one is a sketch, the other is a reference image. But、uh, because of AI, so it just、uh, s- saves us a lot of time.、Um, We can、uh, do a black and white image, and then a colorful image.、Uh, the customer、uh, said that、uh, the story is good, but the pyramid is not exactly what I pictured in mind. So I said, no problem. We can use AI and generate a different image for you.、Um, so the story remains the same, and we can、uh, do this very quickly. So this is a very efficient work, and it helps in the communication process. And such modification uh, doesn't uh, take much time. And since we have、uh, focused our discussion and uh, uh, came to an agreement、uh, very early on,、uh, thanks to the help of AI, and、um, because、uh, we we still need to show our、uh, professional work, so、uh, this is AI generated image. But then we added more、uh, details to it, and here these two trees are n- not the same. Uh, because uh, we also added a lot of details there, but uh, for um, the designers, we need to know that、uh, you want a big tree with、uh, big trunks, and then we can、um, create the work for the customer.、And、these pyramids are not exactly the same, but um, it's uh, easy um, to.、Um, Communicate with the customer. In the past,、uh, we need to sort of read the mind of our customers. Now we don't need to do that.、Um, but you might ask me if、um, we will be replaced by AI. I don't think so. AI is actually help us、uh, speeding up our work, reducing our workload. I think this is quite positive. And then let me give you another.、Uh, Example: If your customer、uh, BMW、uh, want, wants a、um, picture for the Valentine's Day, then what would you do? You know,、um, you know, you could uh, uh, go to、uh, ChatGPT or Midjourney and ask for a picture like this. End of story. But、uh, do you think your customer will like this? Obviously not. So you actually need a process,、uh, and this is related to design thinking. So you first need to think about the process、uh, from the rookie to an expert.、Um, let me、uh, share with you、uh, what is said in the slide.、Uh, first, you need to define the request of your customer. Why、uh, do you want such a picture? And then、uh, we need to analyze this. And、uh, you need to talk about your inspiration, and then finally implementation. So that's、uh, how the process looks like. And y- you don't need to、uh, memorize all the steps. You just uh, tell uh, the ChatGPT、uh, to act like a designer, and you act like a, a customer. So you、um, tell the, the ChatGPT why you need this picture. And、uh, when your customer gives you some data, you just input such data to ChatGPT. You don't need to organize such data because ChatGPT can organize the data. And、uh, so then、uh, ask questions. Like、uh, this is quite interesting. 
the GPT would actually ask you, what's your motivation? What are the motives? Uh, uh, then we answer, we need to engage the audience more. We need more fans interaction. We need to increase the brand visibility. As you can see, the chat GPT is actually asking more follow-up questions. What is really interesting here is that I you don't need to type a lot. Sometimes you give it a little bit of instruction. The chat chat GPT actually returns with even more questions to explore more about the topics. For example, the chat GPT actually asks, what does the client want? What are the client's preferences? So I actually went to the fan page of uh, uh, BMW. So I copied and pasted the uh, the contents of its previous campaigns and pasted it all into ChatGPT for ChatGPT to conduct analysis. Now it's, an, it's analyzing. Now it's saying that now I will, I will, it asks, the ChatGPT asked me, what is the core value of the BMW as, a, as an international brand? Uh, it asked me this question, and I said, well, I don't really know. How about we find some information and analyze? And analyze? So that's exactly what we did. So it's like having a back and forth conversation with a friend who is brainstorming with you. Now, I want to talk a little bit about creative context. For example, here I said, so you can see that GPT is working very hard. It is coming up with context of the storytelling. Usually, if you have uh, conducted this process, when you ask ChatGPT to come up with a creative story, usually the story sucks hard. Uh, it cannot be used right away. But you, as long as you know what to do, you will come up with a. You will be able to generate a. A drastically different outcome. Whenever it does a good job, it tells the chat, chat GPT. You tell the chat, chat GPT, yes, this is the right direction I want you to be headed to. For example, after it come came out with the first story, I was not satisfied. I said, you need to learn more about the brand, the history of chat, chat, um, the history of BMW and these the Taiwanese holiday that during which we will be running this campaign then it came up with more and more information and suggestions so I'm and I said here I am asking chat to gather more information I said since we're running it on the Chinese Valentine's Day tell me what you know about the Valentine's Day tell me 10 things or 10 images that are most crucial when people think about the Chinese Valentine's Day and it tells me that there is uh, this mythical bridge that is central to the Chinese Valentine's Day story or the folklore and it also says that BMW started out um, making engines for uh, airplanes. So here we're making some connections because the bridge, the mythical bridge, is actually high up there in the air. So BMW started out as a manufacturer for airplane engines. So what if we can make the connection between the two elements, which is the fact that BMW's airplane engine, as well as the mythical bridge, which is the center of the Chinese Valentine days of folklore. So I like that idea. So how do we go from there to generating a interesting story so now we have entered the next phase i said well generate a story using these two concepts of course the first story is not really engaging and captivating so here is the back and forth conversation i will not bore you with more details so we had the following conversation uh to refine the story so this is a really interesting image BMW at its um, early, early age uh, was the number one manufacturer of the most powerful airplane engines in the world. Its engine was once used in the airplane that broke the world record in its in the uh, elevation of its uh, flying uh, altitude. So. Um, you could see that we were, make, we were able to gather more and more information in order to enrich the story. So here we came up with the tagline, using BMW's um, engine, we fly higher, closer to the Valentine's Day 
the Lovers Bridge in the air. So that's the original idea. So, so this is this is still very vague. So I was able to make this connection. With the aid of GPT, so this is in pursuit of dreams and love, romance. So in the, in fact, at the beginning, I was not expecting chat or AI to be able to、uh, connect similarly and related elements、uh, and come up with a compelling story. Now. So we we are done with the story part. I know that the, all of you are experts in this field, so I will not bore you with more details. I want to talk quickly about、um, the next topic. There are a lot of tutorials out there showing you how to use AI to generate graphics. However, there's usually there's also what lies at the core. Of design, which is observation, your own input as a experienced designer.、Um, I know that you are all familiar with Midjourney,、uh, so I will. I would just go ahead and skip this particular slide. I think you might be even more interested in perhaps the following examples. I know that、uh, some. Some speakers have already talked extensively about the use of Bing Journey, so but so I will skip that part. Let's, if you if you're just giving prompts, if you're just giving keywords to AI, you're not really designing because you need to control the creative process. For for example, I could just highlight these areas. I could animate the. This specific portion, and you can control how you want the cape to flop up and down the air. So LCM is another another tool. For example, you can create a picture like this on the left.、Uh, so、sometimes, with a technology like this on the right hand side, you can create the style, the graphics in the style that you prefer. Or what else can you do with this? You can use it to tell stories. On the left, you have、uh, just the chunks and blocks of ideas, and you can use it to create a love story. So you're not just、um, you don't just have a story. So as you can see, that、um, everybody could manipulate the、uh, geometric forms on the left. However, the AI is able to generate the images on. The right, so this is a sunset and sunrise. So you could use something that's so simple to create compelling stories. So using prompts and keywords, it's just、uh, the first step. In the future, there will be more to come. So what else can you do? On the left,、uh, this is a, a a clearly a very very simple hand drawn animation. So this is what animators did in the past. However, with、uh, this tool, AI powered tool, you could have something that's shown on the right, and it's real time, so you can make adjustments、uh, as you go along the process. What else can it do? So on the left hand side, you could you could input anything.、It、could be a brush. It could be an an image. It could be motion captured、um, images. So it could have real time detection. For example, you can move your hands around with the motion detectors. And on the right hand side,、uh, you have the images. In the past, you give it prompts, and you have to wait for a while for the images to be generated. But with this AI tool, you no longer need to do that. This new wave of new AI powered tools is changing the design landscape. It is a hundred or a thousand times more powerful and effective than the tools available to. To designers in the past, this is、um, very a very interesting tool for you to try out, and is also something that worries a lot of people because、uh, people are worried that they may not be able to、uh, harness the power of AI. We've talked a lot about.、Uh, What can be achieved and what cannot be achieved with the current AI-powered tools? I think it all comes down to your creative ideas. Even if I give you the the tools, you will still need to stay creative. You still need to have、uh, core ideas.、Uh, so these tools are just here to assist us. 
You need to be a director. You need to think like a storyteller, like a director. AI gives you a thousand possibilities, ten thousand ideas. How do you boil things down? How do you select? How do you make the necessary decisions to arrive at the desired outcome? Finally, I would like to share with you my personal fan page on Facebook. Please, if you want to stay in touch, please reach out to me over Facebook, and we can become friends and start to exchange ideas. Ideas and insights. With that, I conclude my presentation today, and we will now proceed to the panel discussion. May I remind you that、um, refreshments have been prepared by the organizer. Please help yourself to the refreshments、uh, during the break. We will take a brief break now. As we rearrange the setting for the panel discussion today, during the panel discussion, we will also open the floor for questions. We will be accepting、uh, questions from our audience on site. We will also be taking questions using our Slido online、uh, question submission platform. So please raise questions if you have any.
好的，今天的论坛我们即将进行最后一个阶段的活动，也就是我们的语坛交流。所以接下来我们要邀请我们的主持人，也就是我们。Let's welcome the moderator for this session,、uh, the CDO and SVP of、uh, the Compo Electronics, Xi Guan Chen,、uh, to、uh, moderate this session. And、uh, let me welcome、um, Professor、uh, Chu Yu. Chu Yuye,、uh, Dean of、uh, Social Science uh, at uh, the uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong,、um, and、uh, Jok Chang,、uh, CTO of Artificial Intelligence Foundation, and Hans Ling, Director of Group G. So,、uh, moderator, please. Uh, I'm here prepared、uh, with my、uh, questions. Yes, and、uh, I have shared these questions、uh, with the speakers.、Uh, and I think I will use uh, both uh, Chinese and English uh, here uh, to chair the session. Well,、uh, I actually、um, have uh, proposed uh, some questions、uh, for you, but.、Uh, Um, you know, these are uh, AI um, experts. So uh, let me uh, ask uh, uh, one first question.、Um, my first question is: When is the singularity?、Uh, why did I ask this question? Well, because、uh, when we were taking the break,、uh, I was talking about an open AI story and how uh, in. Uh, Four days,、uh, the uh, founder uh, Altman uh, was、uh, sacked, and then、uh, re invited by Microsoft, and then、uh, came back, and、uh, the board、uh, resigned. So, what happened in between, and what what triggered the twist?、Uh, I am.、Uh, I know there are a lot of rumors online, but、um, you know, if these rumors are true. Then uh, they uh, have discovered that、um, LLM,、uh, you know,、uh, because、uh, they were talking about LLM in the past, and now it's about、uh, the computing、uh, power and、uh, the algorithm、um, having、uh, the the level of a, a high school student, and then、uh, a few months later.、Um, The algorithm may be、uh, the level of a university student. You know,、um, in the past we had to feed the computer a lot of、uh, data, a lot of information, and ChatGPT is like an aggregator. So、uh, we it it will be rare for us to get、uh, creativity out of ChatGPT because、uh, these all of these are、uh, you know、uh, uploaded by human. And if there is nothing there in the database,、uh, there's none.、Uh, there's none. But、uh, the new algorithm will be、uh, machine generating content、uh, for a machine, like、uh, AlphaGo.、Uh, it's not、uh, the wisdom uh, that uh, the intelligence、uh, it takes from human. So if I create an image. Uh, like、uh, that brain、uh, feeding this、uh, to the right brain, and then、uh, AI becomes the judge、uh, to determine what is、uh, good, what is、uh, not good. You know,、um, the IQ of human beings、uh, usually is uh, 100 uh, average, or maybe 120, 130.、Uh, Elon Musk had、uh, 150, uh, Einstein 160,、uh, ChatGPT 4.0.、Uh, Is one hundred fifty-five. So ChatGPT five dot o or six dot o will be smarter than human because they aggregate、uh, the knowledge of human beings, and of course、um, they will be、um, ahead of us, ahead of an average、uh, human being. So when is the singularity?、Uh, could you give us your forecast? When will we,、uh, you know,、uh, face with these emerging capabilities?、Uh, you input some data, but you don't know what will come come back.、Uh, you know,、uh, we with the past、uh, 
algorithm, we know what will come back. But then uh, after the singularity, we do not know what the technology will give us. And then uh, we will be faced with a new um, uh, challenge, a new era. This is like a uh, like a podcast. Uh, so uh, we you know we can uh, answer the questions in various ways, uh, and it, uh, so let's uh, talk about the singularity. Uh, allow me uh, to say a few words. Uh, maybe I can alleviate your pressure uh, uh, because I'm not a coding person. Uh, I have a, a background in arts, so I don't really know the uh, advancement of AI or, uh, or leading edge AI. But I remember uh, that there, I read something about open AI. Um, and um, they say that uh, the story behind this uh, uh, open AI is that they have uh, Created AGI uh, that will be uh, that exceeds a uh, human um, intelligence, and that's why uh, the human beings will face extinction. And that's why uh, they send uh, somebody uh, to uh, sack uh, Altman, and uh, so that uh, the artificial intelligence will not uh, destroy the human race. Uh, this is an interesting story. And perhaps the human beings uh, was the human race was destroyed in the past, and we do not know. And then uh, human race uh, just uh, came about again. So and uh, such the extinction might uh, come uh, in the future. I don't know when, but I want to say that I will live every moment, uh, and maybe tomorrow will be the last day. And I, I just keep optimistic and uh, feel blessed that I am living or alive today. Um, singularity. Well, this is a tough question, um, but um, I'm an engineer, so uh, in my view, uh, QSTAR or ChatGPT. Um, you know, uh, they are uh, things with boundaries. QSTAR can uh, work on a uh, math uh, question, but uh, math has a lot of boundaries. I mean, uh, one plus one is two. Uh, only human beings will say that one plus one is greater than two, uh, because it doesn't it doesn't take hold in math. And same thing with uh, Go. Uh, the game of Go has uh, boundaries uh, set by human. Um, within this uh, boundary, you can expand, like uh, what you describe, uh, the left brain uh, competing with the right brain and um, achieve uh, better than uh, human beings because uh, they have um, all the time uh, they have uh, to uh, train uh, the model. And um, AG, I think uh, their goal is AGI. And if uh, AGI is has no boundaries, then uh, there, it will be dangerous. But uh, from what I can see uh, right now, uh, they are still um, their research is still based on a environment with boundaries. So I'm not uh, pessimistic about this. Um, I think um, ChatGPT. Or anything uh, with generative AI are um, created within uh, certain boundaries, and something that is out of boundary would be like this: if ChatGPT understands uh, our environment, uh, understand uh, the uh, smile or uh, the look, the face of the moderator, I will be uh, intimidated because. It, on that day, ChatGPT will interfere uh, in our lives and uh, will make a, a judgment uh, with, um, you know, uh, very detailed uh, emotions. Uh, but right now, you know, uh, I I understand the facial expression of the moderator. Uh, the a AI does not. Even if AI does, it's within the boundaries because I uh, tell the AI what this facial expression means. I feel that this is a very good question. I um, 
in April, uh, when I uh, pondered uh, this issue, I was uh, more optimistic um, because I uh, research, I did research on the evolution of culture. Uh, so in April earlier this year, I was saying that um, I don't think uh, machine culture will uh, come about so quickly because there are still restrictions with the machine. Um, the machine cannot verify the accuracy of information. And we talked about this late uh, earlier. Some information might be inaccurate. And if, uh, if there is an evolution of machine culture, then um, machine has this um, intention. And um, uh, we, we understand, you know, when we uh, communicate, we understand the literal meaning, and we understand the intended uh, uh, meaning. And that's what we learned in social uh, learning. And then uh, we can uh, achieve our uh, goal uh, via different route. And that's how uh, our culture evolves. So that's, uh, that's the uh, capabilities of human beings, uh, communication and uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, so um, OpenAI uh, did not have that. But then a few days ago, um, I uh, read this uh, article published in Nature. Um, machine culture. So uh, the uh, limitation of AI, um, what we know about the limitation of AI uh, was about the machine and uh, uh, machine learning. But then uh, mutual learning between machines will generate a higher level of intelligence than human. This is uh, more uh, likely nowadays. We still do not know if this will come true, but um, um, we need to pay attention to this, especially the ethics. Um, AI ethics, um, what are the regulations regarding AI ethics? If we don't have such regulations, I will become pessimistic. We need to think about uh, how to establish ethics for machine culture and um, how are we going to regulate the use of AI. Uh, with that, we will add human control to it. Otherwise, uh, these uh, AI agents will learn from each other or one another, and um, the result um, can be unimaginable. Uh, Anybody um, questions, uh, answers for, for any questions? Uh, is, when is singularity, anyone? Um, basically, I think that uh, singularity uh, may be a, a, a false uh, assumption. Um, I mean, what is intelligence and um, uh, is higher intelligence uh, going to overcome um, a, a lower intelligence, and the lower intelligence will be dominated or be exterminated? We do not know. Uh, if uh, such are established facts, then your question will be a valuable uh, one. Uh, I'm not uh, just uh, playing an argument with you. As I uh, asked the uh, question earlier, uh, based on the uh, experience of a uh, human civilization, uh, what did the uh, uh, technology uh, work for us, and uh, what um, have we changed because of technology? I usually say that AI is like the second wave of uh, industrial revolution. The first wave is uh, electrification, and so with electrical power. Think the world is different, and the second uh, industrial revolution is a cognify, uh, is a change in our cognition because of AI. The first industrial uh, revolution um, doesn't you now challenge the human race because uh, we have a, a power that is greater than human power, uh, so there is no singularity there. And uh, the second industrial revolution. I think uh, we need to ask a similar question. And there are two important um, basics here. 
uh, what is wisdom, what is intelligence. You know, these are different. And I personally is more optimistic uh, because uh, human uh, make a artificial uh, environment um, because we have this uh, man-made environment, uh, new environment, and uh, human race uh, is changed as a result. So these uh, changes are two-way. Human race and AI both changed. Um, going forward, um, maybe we will have like uh, assisted organs in human body or a memory enhancer. And the wisdom and intelligence will uh, become more like uh, AI is like a uh, partner for us uh, to uh, resolve some, uh, to solve problems. And how do we work with AI? That's the question. It's not like uh, how do we uh, fight against uh, AI because AI is now smarter than human beings. No. Okay. Does anyone have any more questions? I just want to remind everyone, I'm not a doomsday theorist. I am rather optimistic. I will retire in a few years. I think sometimes uh, we need to leave it and for the next generation to deal with the situation. The AI is now being run on classic computers, zero and zeros and ones. However, in many countries around the world, they are using quantum computing to run AI. The what's so amazing about quantum confusing is that the, now the atom is is going up and down. Only it's either zero or one. However. Uh, in quantum computing, it's going 330 degrees. So it's more uh, powerful in terms of its computing power. So zero and one could exist at the same time. So in the quantum lab, there are in fact uh, parallel universes. It does not just exist in the universe. Uh, a cat ingesting poison, one cat is dead, however, one cat comes back to life in the parallel universe. In fact, about 50 companies around uh, around the United States are engaged in researching uh, quantum computing. Uh, I'm not sure uh, whether quantum computing is an is important trend here in Taiwan. Uh, IBM is working on it, and it's already working on the second generation of it. Uh, Microsoft, Google are all using quantum computers in about there's about 15 companies in Canada researching it. And there's also about 50 companies in China researching this as well. They're using light speed uh, to conduct computing. So for quantum computing, although now it's not yet commercialized, it is because it is it could only be run at a negative 273 degrees below zero. Once you sneeze, you could cause it to go away. However, um, you it's capable of uh, accessing cloud information in a very quick manner. So when an AI is enabled by supercomputer, uh, one pair could probably exceed the total um, uh, intelligence of all humans combined. So a lot of people ask uh, why, when that would happen. I would say in about 10 years. In 10 years, I will already have retired. Is that going to happen? So Professor Chu, um, I think you've mentioned a really important point. Quantum computing is also or the evolution of computing is also a one focus of my research. From a historic perspective, I feel that we could predict safely that AI will change our civilizations. If you look at the cultural history of, hu of the mankind, the very first evolution came about because of the invention of spoken language, which had enabled us to collaborate. And the second uh, breakthrough is the externalization of memory, which is a creation of the written words, the writing system. And then after we have spoken language, after the written system, the writing system came about 
different sorts of development and then evolutions um, appeared quickly and successively. So the, with, the, with the modern uh, communication methods, the one-to-one -one communication has been changed to one-to-many. Now, one-to-one -one could be one human to one AI, one to team, one team, one AI to one team. But in the future, it will be done at a more large-scale level. Imagine how that would uh, affect our culture. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to have that sort of mental preparation to anticipate and to know that what's coming, the human-machine collaboration, the human-AI networks will create new agents, will create new relationships, new work working modes. In Star Trek, uh, the setting of the story is, at, is in the 24th century. Captain Picard once said, uh, and the time is in 24th century. The captain said, we no longer need to work because it is the 24th century. The machine is doing our work. However, he also said, how do we define humanity and our goals in life when there is no need for humans to put in the hard work? What is our core value or values? So the Captain Picard has a very proactive view. He said, we hope that, that we can better ourselves. The machine and AIs will help us um, find the motivation to be a better version of ourselves, to have more efforts and time to focus on being empathetic, to be more compassionate, to care about our nature, our surrounding the animals, even the machines. How how possible is that scenario going to happen? No one could say for sure. However, we can anticipate the future. Only by anticipating the future can we create a different future. Now we sit here and we can think ahead to the to the future. How do we establish the necessary regulations and frameworks? How do we train our machines so that we embed medic, um, ethical concerns in our training to train our machines properly at this present time? So these are all the important roles that designers can play. So this sounds a little bit uh, pessimistic. However, at the in the middle of it, uh, there is an element of uh, human control, human awareness. I feel that we still have a chance to take back that control. Professor Charles, Mandarin Chinese is is really good. Um, you should have delivered your presentation in Chinese. So thank you. Thank you for um, your response. Now on to the Q&A. I have prepared some questions. We know that we have a lot of uh, design majors, uh, teachers here and professionals here with us. I, I, have a, I have the following question. So my question is that due to the technological developments and advancements, the roles of designers have changed. The brainstorming session may become obsolete. You don't. You no longer need to work with a group of um, the designers. What if you work with the machines, work with AIs? For example, the director was able to sit in front of his com computer using mid-journey, using all these AI-powered uh, tools. Uh, he, he was able to accomplish that by himself. The BMW could actually, with proper training, with proper knowledge of how to use the tools, could have uh, generated uh, the uh, advertisement by itself. So it could even come up with a different uh, varied uh, advertisement campaigns for different uh, target audience segments. So in light of that, 
How should the school's educational curriculum be adjusted? I am an assistant professor at Shijian University. Many people, many professors are discussing how to adjust our own pedagogy. We are animators by profession. We often think about the future for the future animators. I think, it, I think AI-powered tools offer a lot of opportunities for upgrades. It is true. It it has to make it has made the process more uh, democratic. In the past, uh, you're a designer, and your your job is to create graphics. However. In the future, the there is a graphic AI, there is a text AI, there's animation AI. It the designer's job then becomes the operator or like a conductor who is in charge of managing the different types of AI powered tools. So the designer, him or herself, does not necessarily and have to um, generate the graphs or the graphics him or herself. Um, in the past, an animator spends a lot of time learning the uh, techniques. So now you have those tools. You have illustrators, you have mid-journey, you have ChatGPT. Your job is to conduct and uh, integrate and coordinate all these AI-powered tools. So that would be the next step. So it's more uh, like a a managerial position and you can spend more time in creative brainstorming rather than the actual execution or the generation of the graphics itself. Uh, we all know that the execution process and the back and forth um, adjustment of the graphics can be very time consuming but now with these tools uh, we can reduce the time that it takes to accomplish these tasks. I. I see eye to eye uh, with uh, Mr. Lane, Professor Lane. I have I, I have graduated from university a long time ago. I majored in uh, mechanical engineering. We had to draw a lot of graphs. In school, we had to use very large desks, and we use paper with tiny grid, grids on top of it, and it would take us week. It would take us hours and hours to draw. Uh, components and then and that practice basically stopped that year when I graduated and many people and all of us switched to computer generated graphs after that so that skill has become obsolete now we're just seeing that another version of that cycle happening again now we've seen in today's presentations that um, designers have gone from hand-drawn um, graphics to using AI-powered tools to come up with more diverse uh, graphs. Does that mean that it renders the uh, designers or animators obsolete? No, absolutely not. Uh, based on my observation, we're even becoming busier than ever. Our jobs are not becoming easier or less demanding than before. Now, what's really ha what has really disappeared is the hand-drawn portion. Uh, what, could have, what could have taken us the entire day to draw now takes, for example, a matter of uh, a couple of hours. But uh, we do not, but we are spending, we're not spending less time on the tasks. In the past, we're more focused on coming up with a nice graphic, but now you're managing all aspects of the task or of the project. Now we have tool A, B, C, and D. How do we better utilize them and um, coordinate them to come up with the products or the desired design outcomes that will meet the client's needs? So, um, I, I wouldn't say that, that this, is, this is the exact uh, same uh, history repeating itself. It is um, what we're seeing is that another wave of uh, new tools 
、um, change in the nature of the jobs. For example, the rise of computer, the rise of、uh, smartphones are changing the way people work. Then a lot of people are using、uh, your cell phone as an external hard drive to aid your memory. I think it's the same with AI. AI is also an external tool, so I don't think there's any need to worry about being replaced or losing our jobs. I like to share with you、um, this、uh, quotation. Machines are good at doing, and humans are good at being.、Um, Hans、uh, shared with us、um, uh, what are human input、um, and where a machine can help us、um, in、uh, his presentation. So I think、uh, we need to、um, educate our students so that they can、uh, work with the machine. Um, on this co-creativity platform, they need to know、uh, what are the tools that can、um, help them solve、uh, problems. But then,、uh, if we go back to design thinking,、uh, problem solving is still a human、um, activity, and you could have a, a myriad of、uh, choices to choose from, and that relies on human judgment. You decide.、Uh, What are the ways that will、um, make our uh, users uh, satisfied? That's human judgment. And then,、uh, creative solution.、Uh, how do you determine、uh, the aesthetic quality of、uh, your creative solution? That's again human judgment. I don't know what how the world will look like in ten、uh, or twenty years later, but、um, I. Do believe that we need to um, um, train our train our students,、um, design students、um, about uh, being, uh, because we can delegate、uh, the doing part to machines, and、um, we also need to know.、Um, we also need to verify uh, the uh, doing by machines. You don't need to be good at、uh, coding. But you need to know、uh, the validity of the results、uh, by a machine, so you still need some、uh, technical knowledge.、Um, and I think、um, it, what we、uh, teach the students、uh, is not only about、uh, doing, because machine can do better than us. We don't need to compete、uh, with machine on that. But、uh, we need to focus on human being, the being part. Do we still have time? How about we take、uh, one question from the audience? One question from the audience, maybe. Former president of WDDO, please. In the last year or so, around the globe, I'm seeing this. Tremendous enthusiasm to know about AI and the effect of AI on our lives, especially in Asia. This trend seems to be much more than in the rest of the world. So, what do you attribute this to? Is it curiosity or fear? Okay, let me try to answer this question from the perspective of a psychologist. I think Patrick answered this question already at the beginning. Existential crisis. There are some human qualities that、uh, we are very proud、uh, to have possession, and、uh, now we feel that、uh, well, these human qualities are shared by machines, and I think that create an existential crisis. And uh, uh, and of course, there are also to, aside from uh, epistemic uh, existential security, there's also to Uh, like issue with like security,、uh, security about what I'm going to be if I can be I'm replaceable. So I think to, that could be like to, the reason why、uh, we have this like to,、um, uh, change of emotion. And then to what happened recently with open AI is another major thing. Okay, so humans culture is supposed to be like to, superior to all other forms of culture. 
And now there is a possibility that uh, well, we have more intelligent cultures coming up. That would also be an existential crisis. Srini, I have an easier answer. <laughs> Open AI is in US. Microsoft is in US. NVIDIA is in US. We are more afraid because we have no weapons. <laughs> and, and you know, the, and Elon Musk said these are more, more, more critical than nukes. Right? If you, if you hand it in the wrong hand, they are more, they are more dangerous than the nu nuclear weapons. So that's why we have nothing here in Taiwan. <laughs> we are nervous because all the enablings is in the West. Yes, right. And uh, I, I think it's, it's a realis realistic threat that uh, with the, this AI, generative AI revolution, the rich will get richer. I think this is a realistic threat. Um, time is up. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to learn of, of your optimistic view on the design profession. And perhaps you will become less optimistic now. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, and and um, but. I do not want to highlight the crisis, but uh, we understand that this is a big transformation and perhaps uh, one that we have not seen in the past. Um, in five years later, I don't think you want to go see a human doctor. You want to go see an AI doctor. Why? Uh, because uh, sometimes when you have a headache, it's not a problem with your head. It's a problem with your waist or uh, your internal organs. And if you go to see a doctor, the doctor will tell you to go to a different department and another department, and then you uh, just uh, waste a lot of time there. And with AI, you know, uh, it go across a different department, and it's faster. The judgment is much faster than human doctor. So five years later, you would prefer AI doctor instead of human doctor. I believe this. Uh, uh, well, thank you for your time. And I want to thank our three speakers. Uh, I think uh, human beings, in the end, still have some hopes. Thank you. Yes, uh, this uh, concludes our um, forum. And um, you, the moderators say that uh, the uh, presenters are more, op uh, more, optim more optimistic. And uh, you are not optimi You are not so much optimistic. Uh, so uh, things. So our audience seems to be a bit uh, down now. So uh, let's uh, look on the brighter side and let's think about more uh, a brighter future. And please join us for more activities uh, tomorrow. And please uh, scan the QR code. Fill out the questionnaire. Uh, and if you have any comments or feedback for us, uh, please uh, let us know uh, through Slido, through the QR code. This is the first uh, Taiwan Design Week. Uh